We're eating breakfast. And I'm videotaping this because one, it's an interesting thing to explain. But also that way I only have to say it once. And then certain people can watch it as many times as they need to to understand it. We were walking to school today to, to walk her son to school. And the three of us are together. And then the two of them are walking a little bit faster so they get a little bit further. Then eventually they're far enough ahead to where it doesn't look like we're together. I walk for a ways. Then I turn around and come back because I'm not going to walk to a elementary school looking like just a guy walking to an elementary school. Here's why. In our culture, people are sexist against men. They are prejudiced against men. And here's an example. When I, after my wife stole my kids from me, I went to the park, a couple of days later, I went to the park and was by the playground where the kids are and someone called the police. So the police showed up. The police can't do anything because I'm not doing anything, but the police just show up. They still want my information and everything because someone called them. The thing about that is that's the same park that I took my kids for years and never had any problem. The next time after I lose my kids, I can't even be anywhere near there. And I didn't have these tattoos. Plenty of people, well, yeah, but you had tattoos and you look some kind of way. I was wearing a shirt, didn't have these tattoos. So it's another interesting thing, people who think, oh, you know what, you people aren't going to trust you as much with tattoos. They're really going to have these problems. These problems happen anyways. That's like telling a black person not to have tattoos because people will judge you. You're going to get judged by a crap culture. Being black, being a man, being anything except for whatever is marketed for a certain situation. For example, playgrounds, fun places, those are for kids and women. So, going to a school by yourself, unless you have a kid. No, well, there's a kid right here. Don't worry, I'm supposed to be here. It's not worth it. So I turn around and come back. And so this is what women have to eventually deal with. This is like second generation of being with me. You know, somebody else already created this atmosphere to where now I'm the definitive second class citizen, which is a man without children or, or a woman. You know, I had to, you know, I had a woman and a child walking with me to school, but all of a sudden when I'm a guy again, I'd, I'd turn around and walk back home. So these kind of women, they have to deal with that. They have to deal with the fact that other women and the culture in general breaks down men to where either they're too self-respecting to go into that hostile environment or they're broken and they go into it with their head down. Oh, no, there's somebody here. I'm supposed to be here. And plenty of people just end up angry as hell about the whole situation. But more and more what you're going to see is women not benefiting from it because they're going to end up with nothing but broken guys to choose from. Presently, it's okay. Just about every guy we see is broken as hell and women too, but it's a different story. Guys are broken as hell, but there's still these other guys that you know, make it through the system, a, a, you know, a handful or a small percentage of the guys that we actually like, and, and we'll, just, we'll just encourage them enough to where then it just seems like the atmospheres are cool for guys. No, if you, act like a, if you act like a faggot to women and you act like you have no sex drive, then they'll be comfortable with you. No, if you, if you uh, have no opinion, then women don't mind you being around, but don't make them insecure in any way, including by just seeming to be a single man going to a school. So that makes sense, that works, but look what's happening to our culture. Women are absolutely socially retarded into not being able to handle any man except the most ridiculously unthreatening. Here's a body language lesson for you. One of the reasons for smiling is because you're happy. But our body languages are all traced back, sometimes depending on culture, but you can trace them back to certain ideas. Smiling, for example, is the idea that you're non-threatening. You smile to someone to signal that you're non-threatening. That's the animal kingdom version of it. So what can a man do besides constantly smile? I'm not, not threatening. I'm not threatening. 
And when you go to a service industry or a lot of jobs where they say, we just prefer women. Well, why is that? Because women are just taught to always just be this, this non-threatening thing. Of course, more and more women can be just completely threatening and tedious and everything that we didn't socialize them to be. And then they're still, well, yeah, but it's a woman, so you know, by default she is those characteristics. And more and more men can, with no self-respect, mimic those. No, I'm smiling all the time. I'm non-threatening, non-threatening. But look how far it's gotten to where you have to be the most non-threatening thing in the world, and then you'll get baseline respect of not being doubted or, or judged or prejudiced. And of course, when people are on top of such a system, they go, no, it works, it makes sense, you know what, what, you're a guy, so prove yourself to us. What do you have now, though? A whole bunch of guys hyper-neurotic to prove they're non-threatening. That's why all the guys go out of their way to smile and always be friendly. Not because they feel like smiling or because they're friendly. Plenty of them aren't. They've been socialized to be very self-loathing and hate-filled, murderous, um, you know, military, uh, violent video games, etc. Yet they smile, in particular around women and in environments where they need to make money. Jobs and trying to get laid. Smiling. I'm non-threatening, non-threatening. What you'll notice more and more is that people in our culture, generally, but especially men, they don't even know how to smile anymore because it's so fake. They can look like they're smiling, but it doesn't have anything inside of it. And most of them can't even look like they're smiling. And look, my mouth is upturned, therefore I'm smiling. It's just like when somebody says, how are you? It used to be something like, how are you? Now it's, how are you? How are you doing? No, I'm being friendly. I'm, I'm engaging you. Hi, how is it? And women can do that too now. Ooh, look at progress. Last thing I'll say about it is culture has another example of where men are more and more just commodified into these providers and people who are constantly doubted and become widespread neurotic in culture to try and have people trust them. You can watch popular movies, the depictions of men. They're always doing something. Of course, women are human beings in this culture and men are human doings. Women are human beings. They're just being. I'm just, just being. You watch a film, which is literature. Don't get it, the hype about... The movie's just a movie. We're just watching it. We're just having fun. No, mindless people do that. Movies are literature. Telling stories, conveying ideas. So you watch a movie where women are human beings throughout. They're just being. They're this... They are there because, you know, for their own sake. Men are human doings. If they're not doing something, they're worthless. You know, plenty of people will just say, well, yeah, or, yeah. What would we need a guy for if he's not doing something for us? Men or women will think that. But look at what's happening, how crazy it's getting. The next time you watch a movie, look for depictions. Maybe when, it, when you see it, it'll jump out at you next time. Look for depictions of the lazy man. Look what it means to be lazy or worthless when they depict the the ex-husband as lazy or worthless, or they depict the, the boyfriend that's worthless, like the girl that you, the girl that everyone's rooting for, and she has this guy who's worthless. Look how they depict laziness and worthlessness. The guy will be relaxing. The guy will be eating something. Actually, we'll stick with that. Notice how, in a movie, to show a guy is lazy, they will have him eating something. Just notice it. It's one of those things where Oh, well, no, I'm not one of the thinking type people. I'm, I just watch a movie and I just get drug around by the, by the music. So I don't really think. Think about it. The next time you see a man movie, eating in a movie, it's either a hardworking guy who's just getting a bite to eat before he goes off wearing a suit, going to do some work, or it's a man coming back from, and he's eating with his family, or it's a guy trying to get a woman so he buys her lunch. You never see a man just relaxing and eating let alone with his feet up, unless it's the lazy boyfriend or there's the line of, why don't you go get a job? Or or it's, again, the boyfriend that we hate because he's with that girl and he doesn't deserve her. And look at him, he's eating. Similarly, you can see plenty of movies where the hero just doesn't eat. When everyone else is eating, this is a little bit of an aside, but uh, as it relates to noticing these little messages in movies, watch a movie where everyone eats but the hero's too busy doing something. And a hero's typically a man because men have to be human doings. For a woman to be constantly doing, we'd be like, why is she constantly doing? Why isn't she relaxing, taking time for herself? So it's a double-edged sword. If you want to be a hero, you don't get to just be self-centered all the time. Stop fucking with your fucking face. Jesus Christ. So watch when the man is just eating something. 
it's showing how lazy he is. And when the woman is eating with him, then it's see, I even forgot what I was doing. I don't know what the, I don't know what the fuck. Ah, so when the man is eating, it's because he's lazy. You can notice that. And but we have the now we have this crazy culture that doesn't even realize how subtly it's getting trained to believe that the second a man isn't doing something, he should be getting prompted to do something. That's a lot longer story, but I'm going to quit now because somebody couldn't stop fucking with their face.